Hello students. Today we are going to learn about the next topic in the chapter 2 that is plasticity characteristics of soils. Coming to the next topic that is determination of the liquid limit, plastic limit and shrinkage limit. Let us see how do we determine by different methods. Coming to the first determination that is liquid limit determination. It is determined in the laboratory by two famous methods. The first one is Cassegrain's apparatus. The next one is cone penetration test. These both are very famous laboratory tests for the accuracy of the results. The liquid limit of soil mainly depends upon the clay minerals which are present in it. The stronger the surface change and the thinner the particle, the greater will be the amount of adsorbed water and therefore the higher will be the liquid limit. This point should be remembered. Coming to the Cassegrain's apparatus, this is an apparatus which, which look like. In the laboratory, this is a handle. This is a rubber block. This is the rubber block. This is the instrument by which we make a groove in the soil sample. This is a, a rise and fall mechanism. So generally this mechanism looks like this. First we have to adjust the drop of the cup. This is a cup which is found here. This is a cup. Adjust the drop of the cup of the liquid limit device by releasing the two screws at the top and by using the handle of the grooving tool and a gauge. We have to remember the drop should be exactly 1 cm at the point of contact on the base. Then we have to tighten the screw after this adjustment is done. We have to take 120 grams of the air dried soil sample which is passing through the 425 micron IS sieve. We have to take but it, it is passing through the 425 micron. After that, we have to mix the sample very thoroughly with the distilled water in an evaporating dish or we can also use a glass plate to form a uniform paste. After mixing is done, it is continued for about 15 to 30 minutes until a very uniform mix is obtained to us. Then keep the mix under the humid conditions for about uniform moisture distribution for the sufficient period. For some fat clays, this maturity time may be up to one day, that is 24 hours. Take a portion of matured paste and then remix it thoroughly. Again, we have to mix it after one day. Then we have to place that mix in the cup of the device by a spatula and level it with a spatula or a straight edge to have a minimum depth of the soil as around 1 cm at the point of the maximum thickness. So the excess soil we can uh, transfer to the evaporating dish. Then we have to cut a groove in the sample in the cup by using the appropriate tool. Then draw the grooving tool through the paste in a cup along the symmetrical axis along the diameter through the center line of the cup. Then hold the tool perpendicular to the cup. After cutting it we have to hold the tube which is perpendicular to the cup. Then turn the handle of the device at the rate of 2 revolutions per second. Then count the number of blows until the two halves of the soil specimen come in contact at the bottom of the groove along a distance of 12 mm due to flow and not by sliding. This have to be done by flowing process. Then collect a representative sample of the soil by moving spatula widthwise from one edge to the another edge of the soil cake at right angles to the groove. Then this should include the portion of the groove in which the soil is flowing which is very close to the groove. Then remove the remaining soil from the cup. Mix it with the soil which is left already in the evaporating dish. Now we can change the water content of the mix in the evaporating dish either by adding more water or if the water content is to be increased or by kneading the soil properly if the water content is to be decreased. So it depends upon you whether if you want to increase the water content add more water. If you want to decrease the water content you have to knead the soil for more time. If in no case the dry soil should be added to reduce the water content this point should be remembered. Dry soil should not be added. 
repeat the steps 4 to 10 times and determine the number of blows and the water content in each case is to be noted down. Then you have to draw a flow curve between what log n and w water content and we can determine the liquid limit which is corresponding to the number of blows is equal to 25. This is a procedure water content number of blows. You will get a curve after these are the values from the different experiments. Then we can correlate to the 25th blow. Then this value is our required value. The next method is one point method. In the above method, test should be conducted only 4 to 5 times which is inconvenient and time is very consuming. But this method needs only one test for the result. So, this method is mainly based on the premise that the flow curve is a straight line. We have to take care that the flow curve is a straight line. So, liquid limit is given by the formula WL is equal to WN into N by 24 whole power N. What is WL? Nothing but the water content of the soil when the groove is very close. When the groove closes in N blows. What is N? It is an index. So, we can rewrite like this also WL is equal to C into WN where C is a correction factor. Uh, generally the value of the factor is approximately around 0 0.98 for N is equal to 20 and it is uh, equal to 1.02 for N is equal to 30. Correction factor that is C. This is the next test is a cone penetration test. This is the equipment or apparatus which is seen in the laboratory. Here about 150 grams of the air dried soil is taken and thoroughly mixed portion of material which is passing through the 425 micron IS sieve is taken. Then some of the distal water is mixed to the soil to obtain a mixing disc to form a very uniform paste. Then this wet soil paste is transferred to a cylindrical cup of the cone penetration apparatus where no air is trapped should be ensured. Finally. This wet soil is leveled up to the top of the cup and placed on the base of the cone penetration apparatus. See as shown in the figure. Then the penetrometer is so adjusted that the cone point just touches the surface of the soil paste in the cup and, the initial, and it is initially ready to be taken like initial readings are ready to be taken. Then the vertical clamp is then released allowing the cone to penetrate the soil paste under its own weight for about 5 seconds. After this 5 seconds the penetration of the cone is noted to the nearest millimeter. The accuracy should be nearest millimeter. Then the test is repeated at least to have 4 sets of values of penetration which are in the range of 14 to 28 mm. Then the exact moisture content of each trial is calculated. Then a graph representing the water content on the y axis and the cone penetration on the x axis is prepared. A best fitting straight curve is drawn. Then the moisture content corresponding to cone penetration of 20 mm is taken as a liquid limit of the soil. What is the advantage of this uh, test? It is very easier to perform. This method is applicable to a wide range of soils, not only fine grain, all varieties like wide range. The results are very re reliable and do not depend upon the judgment of the operator. How will determine the plastic limit? Determination of plastic limit is also very important as liquid limit uh, so as to ascertain the plasticity index that is IP of the soil. The plastic limit of a soil is a moisture content which is expressed as a percentage of the weight of the O1 dry soil at the boundary between the plastic and the semi-solid state. This we have already discussed. It is nothing but the moisture content at which a soil will just begin to crumble when rolled into a need of 3 mm in diameter using a ground glass plate or any acceptable surf surface. These are the different type of apparatus which are used to calculate the plastic limit. See, we have to need it around what is the diameter? 3 mm or 1 by 8th of inch. 1 8th of inch. 
what is the procedure we have to take 20 grams of thoroughly mixed portion of material which is passing through the 425 micron sieve hence afterwards we have to mix it thoroughly with the distilled water in the evaporating disk till the soil mass becomes plastic enough to be easily molded with fingers we have to allow it to season for sufficient time generally for one day to allow the water to permeate throughout throughout the soil mass then take about 8 gram of this plastic soil mass and then roll it between the fingers and glass plate with just sufficient pressure to roll the mass into a thread like which is shown in the figure of uniform diameter throughout its length the rate of rolling shall be between 80 and 90 strokes per minute we have to continue rolling till we get a desired diameter that is 3 mm. Then knead the soil together to a uniform mass and again re roll. Continue the process for about uh, uh, until when, when the thread crumbles when the diameter is around 3 mm. Then collect the pieces of the crumble thread in airtight container for moisture content determination, which is described in IS 2720 part 2 1973. We have to repeat this test at least for three times to get accurate results and to take the advantage of the results calculated to the nearest whole number. Then the water content at which the soil can be rolled into a thread of approximately 3 mm diameter without crushing is known as plastic limit. This is a shrinkage limit. These are the different stages. These are the different stages for derivation of shrinkage limit. Stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3. Let us see how they are correlated. What is figure 1 showing? It is a so showing about the soil sample. Sorry. It is showing the soil sample which is fully saturated and water content greater than the expected shrinkage limit. What is figure B? It is showing the shrinkage limit. What is figure C showing? A condition when sample is over dried. So the total volume in figure C is the same as the total volume in figure B. Here the total volume is not changing. Okay. This total volume and this total volume is the same in figure B and C. Uh, let us consider ms is the mass of solids. So the mass of water in stage 1 is taken as mass of solids minus m1. Loss of mass of water from stage 1 to stage 2 is taken as V1 minus V2 into rho W into weight of water. Then the mass of water in stage 2 is taken as Ms minus M1 minus V1 minus V2 into rho W. From the definition of the shrinkage limit, we get Ws is equal to W1 into V1 minus V2 by Ms into rho W. What is W1? It is nothing but the water content in the stage 1. 1 is the stage 1. So, this is the equipment which is showing the shrinkage limit. What we do here? We have to take a sample of mass about 100 grams from a thoroughly mixed soil which is passing again through the 424 micron C. We have to take around 30 grams of soil sample in a large evaporating disk as shown in the figure. Then we have to mix it with the distilled water to make a creamy paste and ensure that air bubbles are not entrapped. Then take the shrinkage disk. Then clean it and uh, determine its weight. Fill the mercury in the shrinkage dish as shown in the figure. Then remove the excess mercury by pressing the plain glass plate over the top of the shrinkage dish. The plate should be flush with the top of the dish and no air should be entrapped inside it. Then we have to transfer the mercury of the shrinkage dish to a mercury weighing dish and we have to determine the mass of the mercury to an accuracy of around 0.1 gram. The volume of the shrinkage dish is equal to the mass of mercury in grams which is divided by the specific gravity of the mercury. Okay. Then we have to coat the inside of the shrinkage dish with a very thin layer of silicon grease or Vaseline because they are very non-sticky. Then we have to place the soil specimen in the center of the shrinkage dish which is equal to about one third of the volume of the shrinkage dish. We have to not fill, fill it with a... Uh, soil sample only one third should be filled then we have to tap the shrinkage dish on a firm cushioned surface and allow the paste to flow to the edges then add more soil and continue the trapping till the shrinkage dish is completely filled and excess soil paste projects out 
about its edges. Then we have to strike out the top surface of the plate with a very straight edge. Wipe all the soil adhering to the outside of the shrinkage dish. Then we have to determine the mass we, uh, we need to the soil sample that is M1. Dry the soil in the shrinkage dish in air until the color of the pad turns from dark to light. Then because when the soil gets dried its color changes right that. Then dry the pat in the oven at around 105 to 110 degrees Celsius to constant mass. Then we have to cool the dry pat uh, using a desiccator. Remove the dry pat from the desiccator after cooling and weigh again the shrinkage dish when the dry pat to determine the dry mass of the soil that is MS. Then place a glass cup in a large evaporating dish and fill it with mercury. Remove the excess mercury by pressing the glass plate with prongs which are firmly over the top of the cup. Then wipe off any mercury which is adhering outside the cup and clean the cup. Then remove the glass cup full with mercury and place it in another evaporating dish taking care that no excess mercury should spill outside the cup. Now take out the dry pad of the soil from the shrinkage dish and we have to immerse it in a glass cup which is full of mercury. Take care not to end up air under the pad. Then we have to press the plate with prongs on the top of the cup firmly. Then the color mercury which is displaced by the dry pad in the evaporating dish. And then transfer this mercury weighing dish. We have to transfer this to the mercury weighing dish. Now determine the mass of the mercury to an accuracy of again 0.1 gram. The volume of the dry pad which is taken as V2 is equal to the mass of the mercury which is divided by the specific gravity of the mercury. We have to repeat this procedure at least for 3 times for the accuracy. Then we get the water content by the formula which is used here. So uh, by using this ex uh, expression we can find out the shrinkage limit of the WS is the shrinkage limit of the soil sample which is equal to MS minus M1 minus V1 minus V2 into rho W by MS. The shrinkage limit can also be found if the specific gravity of the soil particles is known. This is the formula rho W by rho D minus 1 by G where rho D is equal to MS by V2. There are actually two methods. These are the different formulas which are used in method 1 and method 2 respectively. Thank you.